From the JAMA Network, this is JAMA Clinical Reviews, interviews and ideas about innovations in medicine, science, and clinical practice. Here's your host. Hello, and welcome to this JAMA podcast. I'm Dr. Kirsten Bibbins-Domingo, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of JAMA and the JAMA Network. I'm joined today by Dr. Issa Davis, a practicing family physician and health services researcher. Dr. Davis is a professor of medicine, a visiting professor of family and community medicine, the associate vice president for community health, and the senior associate dean of population health and community medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. She is also the lead health equity strategist for the University of Maryland Institute for Health Computing. Dr. Davis is the director of the Transforming Biomedical Research and Academic Faculty Through Opportunity, Training, and Mentorship Program, also known as TRANSFORM. We have Dr. Davis on this program because she's a member of the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, And she's joining us to discuss the new recommendation statement from the task force on screening for hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. JAMA has published this recommendation statement and the evidence report on which the task force recommendation is based. Dr. Davis, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Terrific. Well, I hope you would begin with just a high-level summary of what this recommendation statement is telling us. What does the task force recommend regarding screening for hypertensive disorders of pregnancy? Yes. So we recommend that all pregnant persons of all genders are screened for hypertensive disorders of pregnancy with blood pressure measurements at every prenatal visit. And that with this screening, that once they are detected, then receive appropriate management for that hypertensive disorder of pregnancy to prevent poor health outcomes for mom and baby. Okay. And this is a B recommendation, which in the language of the task force means that the evidence exists and there's quality evidence that the task force could evaluate and that the benefits um, outweigh any risks of doing this type of screening. So it's a fairly strong recommendation for the task force for this type of intervention. Tell me, what do we think about under this rubric of hypertensive disorders of pregnancies? What's included? What are other words and conditions that people might be familiar with? This recommendation covers a group of what we called hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, and that includes gestational hypertension or someone who had a normal blood pressure before pregnancy, but then developed high blood pressure during pregnancy after the first 20 weeks gestation. It also includes preeclampsia, which is a more severe form of hypertension that occurs during pregnancy and has some other associated clinical features such as headache and blurry vision and some effects on the kidneys. And then an even more severe form called eclampsia, which is severe hypertension along with having seizures. It's the group, this group of conditions that we call hypertensive disorders of pregnancy that we're recommending screening during pregnancy with a blood pressure measurement to be able to detect. And what happens if left unscreened? What are we worried about in these disorders? So what we're really worried about is pregnant persons becoming sick very quickly. So high blood pressure during pregnancy can develop quickly, and it can also progress to more severe forms and have some other complications that occur with it. So seizures, headaches, um, stroke is a large one, and of course, death from both the pregnant person and also death for babies. So it is important for us to be able to identify these conditions early so that there's the appropriate monitoring and certainly treatment to help prevent these bad outcomes from happening. And unfortunately, right now, you know, we're in the midst of a maternal health crisis. We have some of the highest rates of maternal death in the country, and hypertensive disorders of pregnancy is a leading cause of these maternal deaths. And so being able to detect these conditions early and often will help us to improve the health of both pregnant persons and their babies. 
Yeah, JAMA has spent considerable attention and focus on the issues of maternal mortality. The rates in the U.S. are high compared to other similar countries. The rates are particularly high in some groups, Black pregnant persons, Native Americans, Alaska Native persons, and the rates are on the rise in all pregnant people of all races and ethnicities over time. So it seems like this particular recommendation statement in the context of those trends is particularly important. And I think the more that we can raise awareness and the more our clinicians can be aware of these elevated rates, but also, as you mentioned, disproportionately affect Black and Native American and Alaska Native persons to a much higher degree will help us be able to treat more and to make a difference in these outcomes. You know, it's a very straightforward recommendation. And the good thing about this recommendation is it's actually pretty easy and feasible to implement, right? Taking a blood pressure at every prenatal visit is something that all clinicians can do and something that they do often anyway. So the more we can get the word out to raise awareness that this simple screening test can make a big difference in some of these outcomes and for some of these populations is really, really important for us to do. Right. So as you said, this is something we already do quite often in clinical practice. We seem to take blood pressure measurements all the time. It's important to know that the evidence suggests that this is an important screening test. Did the task force consider any other tests that might help us to identify pregnant people who are at risk for these outcomes, given that we're already seem to be measuring blood pressure? Yeah. So we, in this review, did look at some other screening tests. However, the evidence evidence was clear and strong on was clinician blood pressure measurement being done was the most optimal test for identifying these conditions. And so that is the good news of our recommendation. Yeah, one of the things that oftentimes happens with a recommendation for something that we actually do do fairly routinely in clinical practice is that we also need clinicians to act on an elevated blood pressure measurement. Screening only works when we initiate those things that happen downstream. So I'm sure that's one of the things you probably are highlighting with this recommendation. To achieve the benefit of our recommendation, the following with appropriate monitoring and treatment is really important. And in ensuring that the pregnant persons get in to treatment and get into screening are also important. And that's actually where some of our community health professionals can be really helpful too, is helping to connect the care to get in for screening. We know that in some populations, pregnant persons don't often have access or have a lower rate of coming to prenatal visits. That's where our community health professionals can be particularly helpful in helping to encourage women and helping to connect women to get in to be screened and also supporting them through management and treatment as well. You know, one of the things that I learned and was really highlighted for me recently in reading and talking with people about the high rates of maternal mortality is just how much of this mortality happens in the postpartum period. So what does this statement say about the postpartum period? Yes. So we did look at the limited evidence that was available. And unfortunately, the evidence is not there yet for us to make a recommendation about screening in the postpartum period. However, You know, we do always encourage patients be counseled on these conditions prior to discharge to understand what the signs and symptoms are. And in that postpartum period, make sure that they're connecting with their clinicians to get their blood pressure checked and their appropriate monitoring. So we always encourage clinicians, number one, to use their best judgment, but also that patients be counseled prior to delivery to know what signs and symptoms they may experience and ensure that they talk to their clinician about appropriate treatment. That is actually one of our research gaps that we highlight is to get more studies that will help us to understand that postpartum period a little bit more and what screening strategies and effective interventions need to happen in that time period. You're a family physician, so you must see people across the entire period around their pregnancy. But for me as a general internist, I always think about that postpartum period, which might be a period where a person who was recently pregnant might go back to another clinician who was taking care of them or for other reasons. And for all of us who do primary care to think about the risks during these periods. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
What other studies does the task force highlight here? Where else do we need more research and what is the task force calling for? Yes, as I mentioned, we need more research that looks at that detecting and mitigating the consequences of hypertension disorders of pregnancy during that postpartum period. We also need more evidence on some of these newer technologies that have come out since COVID, telehealth and remote blood pressure measurement, and how that may be useful or not in pregnancy in the postpartum period as a way to address some of those access to care concerns. We also are calling for more evidence to understand the barriers to health care, especially prenatally and after, in ways that we can increase that connection for patients to care. And then certainly with that, understanding what is contributing to some of these health inequities that we see with the disproportionate rates among our Black and Native American and Alaska Native populations who are experiencing more of the morbidity and mortality from these disorders, and so that we can certainly help to close that gap. And finally, the other concern, we focus on the perinatal period in terms of the health outcomes, but one of the things that this group of hypertension disorders of pregnancy also does is it increases patients' risk of cardiovascular complications over the course of their lifetime. And so really understanding how we can prevent that from happening, we're calling for more research to understand this connection between hypertensive disorders and cardiovascular complications. So lots of areas for more studies and more research. We are really looking forward to reviewing that. Yes, you're making the link to the way in which elevations in blood pressure really are related to so many complications across the life course. You're focused here in this recommendation on the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, but certainly the task force has recommendations on elevations in blood pressure screening and interventions related to that. And it's important to pay attention across the entire life course. So I think that comes out very nicely in what you've highlighted, as well as where we need additional evidence, because certainly these trends are not moving in the right direction. And this seems to be an important recommendation, both of what we can do now and where else we need to have more information. So I want to highlight that, again, in the the midst of this very alarming maternal health crisis that we're in, with the high rates of maternal deaths and morbidity, with hypertensive disorders of pregnancy being one of the leading causes of those maternal deaths, and also, again, long-term cardiovascular complications for the pregnant persons, this recommendation really is essential because it's an easy and feasible tool that clinicians have, which is to screen all pregnant persons during pregnancy with a blood pressure measurement to detect one of the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy and then ensuring that they get connected to that care to get the appropriate management and treatment really can make a difference in terms of the outcomes for both the pregnant person and their baby. And that all clinicians, as well as our community health professionals, really can play a very important role, particularly as it relates to our health disparities with Black persons and Native Americans and Alaska Native persons who are at higher risk of developing these conditions and having higher risk of having poor outcomes from them. Anything to help connect these persons to the appropriate care to get screened and receive management and support them through their pregnancy and postpartum will go a long way for helping us to make a dent in some of these increasing trends that we're seeing. So very important recommendation. And I really appreciate you having me here to discuss that with you today. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is a timely recommendation, and I'm happy that we have an evidence base and that the task force is able to also outline where the important gaps are in this critical area for the health of pregnant people. So thank you so much. I've been speaking with Dr. Issa Davis, a physician and member of the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, about the new recommendation statement from the task force on screening for hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. This episode was produced by Shelley Steffens at the JAMA Network. To follow this and other JAMA Network podcasts, please visit us online at jamanetworkaudio.com. Thank you for listening.